13 minutes past eight, love him or not, you can't argue John Key hasn't been and isn't still an effective and very popular political leader going into the election, looking for a third term. Most polls currently have his party touching, uh, if not over 50%. So how did the currency trader and the product of a state house in Christchurch end up being this successful? His biography, Portrait of a Prime Minister, is out today. It's written by John Rowan, who is with us. Good morning to you. So let's deal first of all with the charge that this is propaganda. It's a couple of you know months out from an election. Suddenly we've got this 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 free hit for a prime minister. Well, I don't think it is. It's, the book doesn't deal much with the election at all. Uh, it's aimed to be to have a life far beyond the election, hopefully. But it's being put out now because elections are always risky. Who knows what's going to happen? And we think that there's a market right now for reading about more about John Key, knowing more about him. A lot of interest in him. But who knows what will happen in six months' time. It paints him well, though, doesn't it? Yeah, I think he's pretty good. And you went in thinking he's pretty good? or? Yeah, I did. I mean, uh, the, the, the commission I got was, you know, this guy's amazingly popular for a, for a politician. C- can you tell us why? And that was really the whole, the whole uh, you know, prospectus. And mm. I could have taken, I, I, I could have gone either way. I could have said he's a charlatan who's fooling us all, or he really is, you know, Pretty good. Mm. What did you get? You got his cooperation. Yeah. Could you have written it without his cooperation? Um, in the in the time I had, it would have been hard because I'd have had to go and, and find people who are willing to speak. You know, knowing that he wasn't cooperating, and they would probably then be antagonistic to him, and it would have been a it would have been a different exercise, and I wouldn't mm. have enjoyed it very much. What did you get with his participation? I got access to his family, his two sisters, who were who were very very good. Uh, to uh, to Wayne Eagleson, his chief of staff, uh, and all his staff, really. Um, so I, I got I got great access. Could you decipher the spin? Because I mean, someone like Wayne Eagleson would be all over you. And don't forget to mention this. And no, I just give you this one. No one else has got this, and put that in the book because that'll be good. Well, no, there's a bit of that about it. Yeah, yeah, but I think I can tell. The background. I don't know whether you wrote this or this this was the blurb, but the background of being an it was unorthodox. It suggested for a national prime minister, his background being raised by a solo mother, Jewish background, very poor. I would have thought it was it was exactly what a national leader is. It's it's a person who represents a country uh, where anything is possible, and if you work hard, you can achieve. And yeah. that's what he is, isn't it? Yes, but I think in the national side of the fence, you don't get that very often. I think they more often come from better off backgrounds. Mm. But he is a living, breathing example of somebody who, you know, given the opportunity, he's off and running. Yeah, that's right. He's not a great speaker. He's not an imposing figure. He's not a leader with any presence. So, and this is you saying that, Mm. how do you explain it? I think it's kind of the lack of all those things that might be his appeal. People sense that here's, here's a fairly ordinary guy. Who's, who, who does some silly things, makes mistakes, talks like everybody else in New Zealand, uh, and yet he's also at the same time, you sense that he's very, very competent, that he, he trusts his own instincts and judgment, and people who do that tend to get tend to give others confidence too. Yeah. It's very interesting insight. I, I was saying earlier on that uh, if you're a political junkie, there, there might not be a lot new in the back end of the book in terms of it's happening now. You know, we know the issues and the yeah. policies and things like that. But the background story, that, that time he sat at the table and he says to his mother, we have nothing, mm. I want more than nothing, mm. uh, the, I thought that was a, a, a fascinating insight into a kid, I mean, it's a pretty, un, pretty, pretty unpleasant thing to say to your mother for a start, isn't it? Mm, yeah, and, and he says that himself, and that was the only time he ever said that that, that upset her, because I think his, 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 uh, his elder sister, who's a lot older than the, than the two younger ones, praises the, the, the way the kids treated them, their mother and, 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 and she them. That was obviously a very special relationship that they had, the three of them. What do we know of the split? Because I'm not sure I knew of it. I knew he was raised by a single mother, but what do we know of the split and what do we learn of the split uh, the, and how it affected him? I think that there was pressures of, uh, of business. They were running a restaurant at a difficult time in New Zealand in the mid-60s. Um, it probably wasn't doing very well. Uh, his father took to drinking a bit and... Uh, Beyond that, I don't know either, but you can you can kind of fill in the gaps that things got tense and at a certain point his mother left. Did it shape him? Um, it's very, it's very hard. I don't think it has very much. Um, he, he himself doesn't, uh, in fact, he said to me quite early on when I started to get into this, 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 this background that he said, uh, you're not going to psychoanalyze me, are you? 
you know, he, he couldn't bear the thought of, yeah. of, of that happening. And I sort of understand that why he would say that and why he, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't think there was any value in doing that. Yeah. You know, he, count, he counts himself lucky for, for the mother he had and the values he was given and the upbringing he had, and that's, that's, that's what shaped him. He is what he is. Yes, he is. Which is part of the thinking, in, in, in this as we were talking off here about the Springbok Tour, this came to the public's attention when he made that comment about not really not thinking much about the Springbok Tour at the time. Mm. This, is, this is what, he's in the here and now, isn't he? Yes, he is. He's that's, not a great student of history. No, that's what interests me too. And, and, and nor the future, you know, to be a bit critical. I mean, Labour's right that there's not a lot of far-sightedness there. So he, and, and, I, and I think it's currency trading. In currency trading, you, you work in the day mm. or in the minute, even in, in, in the second. They watch their screens all day long, they don't go away for lunch, they can lose money in a, in a, in a split second. And so they get to operate on their instincts for, what, for their sense of the trend now, what's happening and where things are going. And I think it's the same for him in politics, that day by day, you go, each day is kind of a a ledger for him. Did I come out ahead or behind today? And that'll be that skill he's got that, um, while people like you and I are, are fascinated with how it's going to affect the poll or any given issue, the reality is most stuff doesn't affect anything. No. He's, he's worked that out. Yeah. And, but, and and he just lets it ride. And he's also worked out what does affect the poll. Yeah. What what, what, what people are going to care about. And one example was the was the school class size issue last year where he, he realised that was one that would go to people's care. There's a little story in there that um, goes to him being a particularly good study, and that is he goes to Preble. Uh, he's new in the house, and he goes to Preble, who's raised a point of order, and he goes over to Preble and goes, what were you doing there? Explain it to me. And Preble, who's been there for 117 years, goes, no one's ever mm. come up and done that. Mm. Amazing, eh? Yes, it Th is. That shows a guy who wants to learn. Yeah, and that, that, that comes right through the book in other places too, even squash. You know, his, his, old, his, his companions playing squash back then said he was always asking them questions. How do you do this? How do you do that? How do you, you know, that, yeah. that shot? How does it work? And I think in every stage in his life, he's been keen to learn how to do it properly. Do you think this is just nothing more than a challenge? I, I, I recited that story before 8 o'clock of oh, he's sitting in the house watching the documentary about how to be a money trader, and he goes, oh, I think I'll do that. And off, off, off he goes and does. And then he goes, oh, I think I'll be a prime minister. Yep, I, th I think it is. And he, and he, and he said to me that he, he, he loves the, uh, the risk in politics, you know, where every word you utter is a bit dangerous. Every, every question you answer could, could, could trip you up. Mm. Um, and so, you know, in, in press conferences and, and in the House, he's living on that kind of edge and has to get it right all the time. And he trusts his instinct to get it right. And as we know, he nearly always does. How much of it's luck? Because part of your argument, you argue, I would disagree with you personally, but it doesn't matter. But you say Jim McClay and Jim Anderton in different scenarios at different times might have gone on to be leaders. Oh, yes, I'm sure. And so, so it's, it's when you enter the game yep. is, is everything. Yeah, when you enter, you've got to pick the right time when your party's at a low ebb yeah. and, and, and you can work up through the ranks at the right time to hit the, hit the spot and be a new face. You know, uh, uh, when a government's defeated, people generally don't want to see the remnants of the old government coming back to lead a, to, to, to lead a new one. So looking for a new face, you've got to be that new face at the right time. And Maclay and Anderton both had, you know, they, they both had the skills of, to be prime minister yeah. and could have been and probably expected to be if things had panned out differently. Does that then lead to the scenario that if he doesn't win in September, he's gone? And if he does win uh, and doesn't win in a fourth term, he's gone, or is he leaving mid-third term? He says he'll see out a third term. Right. And in fact, he, 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 he's, he doesn't rule out a fourth. And given, given his popularity and the way he's governing uh, in the Holyoke sort of style, he, a fourth is possible. Um, and he says he wouldn't run away as soon as the going gets tough, when the tide turns and he senses public opinion getting sick of his government and him and things are going on the downhill slide. Yeah. I'm not sure I believe him on that. No. I think as a currency trader, currency traders, don't they, they cut their losses when they see things going, We're done. going, going down. down I wonder if part of his success is the fact he doesn't need to do it. So he's financially independent. He could do anything he wants, wherever he wants. So therefore, this is a project. If it's working, great. And if it isn't, we're, let's move on. Yeah, yeah. And with that comes a sort of natural, I don't know, confidence. Yeah, yeah, I think he does. He, he, his instincts are good, and he knows it. He trusts them, and he enjoys living on them. Yeah. It's a good book. Well done. Appreciate your time. Thank you. John Rowan, John Key, Portraits of a Prime Minister. It's 8.23.